Uh, we're still four points shy of 2402, which would be the all time record close, a new one for the S&P. So, look, if we're right near, languishing near these record highs, it's really been a walk in the park with a few stumbles here and there for you, the investor, as U.S. markets keep hitting new highs. But with the summer coming upon us, is there danger of getting stock burn? That's the money version, Mark, of, of sunburn, right? Mark Masson is with us. <laughs> Listen, I, you've got $7.6 billion under management. You don't want to lose it. You want to grow it. What are you doing with your client's money right now? Yeah, look, I always tell investors that diversification is your buddy. And what investors always tend to do is jump onto the thing that's the that's the high, and that would be the U.S. market. U.S. markets have been uh, overperforming international markets for several years now. But I want to in, uh, invite investors to consider that uh, up to 45% of our portfolios are international and focused on emerging markets, com uh, countries like Singapore, Malaysia, Mexico, even China and Russia. Yeah, if you add them to your portfolio, you can increase returns to reduce risk. But we've already seen a decent run up in these first six months. We have this on our screen right now where emerging markets up about 16%, Europe up 14% compared to the S&P up 7%. Yeah, isn't this interesting? Because the narrative was if Trump gets in, emerging markets and international uh, stocks are going to get killed. And it's been the opposite. This year to date, emerging markets are up 16%. And um, who would have predicted that? Absolutely nobody. So don't try to predict the future. Uh, what we've been doing is selling off the, the U.S. portions and buying the international over the last several years. And inevitably, these things switch. And you want to be, uh, have a little bit of both because when they switch, you want to be mm -hmm. able to buy them when they're cheap. Okay, do the homework for us. Give me three names because uh, at this point, people are still wondering, well, where should I put it versus an ETF? Do you like individual names? Well, I gave you some stocks here. I gave you Hyundai and Samsung and uh, Alibaba, but I don't, I don't want investors to get myopically focused just on several stocks because we are in over 45 different countries and over uh, 16,000 individual holdings. I think it's a big danger to get too, too focused on one, um, but you do want to make sure that you're not gambling on individual sectors or individually stocks. It's a hard thing to stay globally diversified because people see things that are hot. They want to jump on it mm -hmm. and get rich quick. And that's, that's dangerous for investors. What are you telling investors to stay away from, to avoid at all costs at the moment? The biggest thing I see investors doing right now is they're, they're getting greedy on interest rates. Interest rates are an all-time low. So what they try to do is they try to cheat out on the yield curve with long-term bonds, and then they try to cheat up with junk. Well, when interest rates start to go up, and if we do have an economic downturn, those things will get crushed, and they'll just plummet to the bottom at the same time that stocks are doing it. So I say stay away from junk bonds, stay away from long mm -hmm. bonds to the extent you have fixed income, high short quality, short term uh, uh, investments in securities to offset right. the risk of the equities. Uh, we got about 30 seconds here. Do you get the sense that we will have tax reform this year? And if we don't, does that mean the markets are, are going to plummet or have they priced that in already? Boy, that's, that's above my pay grade. But one thing I know about <laughs> markets is this, is that they always forecast the future, and that's always priced in today. Therefore, only random and un unpredictable events are going to change things going forward. And how many times have you had a show where you're like, oh, this, this wasn't expected to happen, and look what happened to the market.